Uh, chapter 1, Section 1, Evaluating Algebraic Expressions. The notes today are not very long. And like I said, I think you guys have seen this stuff at the middle school, so hopefully we can fly right through it. I'm just going to jump right into some examples. If, well, it says evaluate each expression for x equals 8. So I've got the expression on letter A, the expression on letter B. Letter A is the absolute value of 4 minus x plus 2. Absolute value of 4 minus x plus 2. Does anyone have any idea how I would evaluate that expression for x equals 8? Could you raise your hand and... Yes? Very good. Very first thing I need to do is plug 8 in for my variable x because that's what it's telling me x equals. Does that make sense? So, I'm just going to rewrite the expression, take out the x, and put 8 in its place because it's telling me, hey, let x equal 8 in this case. Everyone see that and understand that? Yes. Okay. Once I plug in, once I substitute 8 for x, now I'm just working out the problem using my order of operations. Can someone raise your hand and tell me what the order of operations are? Anyone remember the order of operations? Once I say it, you'll probably be like, oh, yeah. PEMDAS? You don't remember PEMDAS? I like to call it GEMDAS. I like to make the P a G and uh, call it grouping symbols. Y'all used to it being parentheses, right? But there's more than just uh, parentheses that are all grouping symbols, so I, I call it GEMDAS. The G is grouping symbols. That would be parentheses, brackets, absolute value in our case here. What does the E stand for? Exponents. If you got any exponents, you would do that after the grouping symbols. What does the M stand for? Multiplication. What does the D stand for? Division. division. We deal with multiplication and division together. And we do all multiplication and division from left to right. Does that make sense? What does the A stand for? Addition. addition. What does the S stand for? Subtraction. Subtraction. So we're going to use these orders of operations to simplify our expression from here. So G stands for grouping symbols, right? Do I have any grouping symbols in this case? Yes, what are they? Yeah. Yeah, the absolute value bars, right? So I need to simplify everything within the absolute value bars. So what's 4 minus 8? Negative 4. Any questions there? Do I have any other grouping symbols with operations going on inside of them? No. I still have the absolute value bars, but I've done all the operations I can inside of them, right? So, since I still have them, I need to go ahead and simplify them. What would the apps... First off, let's rewind a little bit. Can someone tell me what absolute value means? Huh? Expand on that a little bit. What if it's positive? Keep it as a positive. Do we know why that's the case? Why it always turns to a positive number? Okay. Oh, go for it. Very good. Perfect. That's what I was looking for right there. Absolute value means the distance from zero. Okay? So how far that number is on a number line away from zero. Um, I live about a mile away from Carl Lauder. So when I drive to school, I drive one mile here. Right? When I drive back to my house, do I drive a negative mile? No, it's still a positive mile. We don't have negative distances, do we? So, that's why it always changes to positive because it's a distance, a distance from zero. Does that make sense? So, how far is negative 4 away from zero? Four. four units. So, the absolute value of negative 4 
is for. Any questions on that? We good so far up to this point. So, do we have any more grouping symbols? Nope, we got those all taken care of. What does the E stand for? Exponents. Do we have any exponents here? Nope, so we can skip that step. Remember, we deal with multiplication and division together from left to right. Do we have any multiplication or division in our problem? Nope, so I can skip that. And then we deal with all addition and subtraction together as well from left to right. That's my last step. What's 4 plus 2? 6. So the value of my expression when x equals 8 is 6. Any questions on how I got that? Okay. Can I pick up the pace a little bit? All right. Letter B. Square root of 2x minus 3. Square root of 2x minus 3. Once again, just like on letter A, what's my first step going to be? Say what? Well, what do I need to do before I can start evaluating anything? Yeah, I've got to replace my variable with the value that it tells me to equal it. So I'm replacing x with 8. Okay, grouping symbols, do we have any grouping symbols? I like to count my square root as a grouping symbol if I have operations going on underneath it. Do I have operations going on underneath it? Yeah, yeah I've got multiplication, right? So let's simplify everything in the square root first. What's 2 times 8? 16. And then we can go ahead and simplify the square root. That way it's out of the way for us. Okay? What is the square root of 16? What does the square root mean? Square root means I'm asking myself what number times itself gives me that number under the radical. Okay? It's not 8. What is it? 4. 4. Four times itself gives me 16, correct? So square root of 16 would be four. Any questions how I got that? Once I simplify that, everything else in the expression just comes down. The minus three just comes down. Do we have any exponents? Nope, we don't need to do any exponents. Do we have any multiplication or division? Nope, but we do have addition or subtraction, so what's four minus three? One. So the value of my expression when x equals 8 is 1. Question is how I got that. Okay, so plug in your variable or a number for your variable. Use your order of operations to work it down. Pretty simple, right? Or pretty straightforward, I should say. Questions on example 1, A, or B? No. Can I move on? Sweet. Okay. Previous examples had one variable. How many variables are here? Two. Two. X and Y. Evaluate each expression for X equals negative 3 and Y equals 4. X equals negative 3 and Y equals 4. Letter A is 2X plus 3Y. Do you think the process is going to change at all since I added another variable? No. I'm still going to have to plug in and then use order of operations to work it down. So, very first step, what do I need to do? Replace the x and y with what? Very good. Place x with negative 3 and y with 4. I like to use parentheses whenever I plug in if there's multiplication going on. So since 2 is being multiplied by x and I'm replacing x with negative 3, 
I'm going to put that negative 3 in parentheses. Any confusion on how I've plugged in? Are we all pretty good replacing a variable with a number? Yeah. The number that that variable equals. Okay. Do we have any grouping symbols with operations going on inside of them? I know we've got parentheses, but are there any operations going on inside of them, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? No. So I don't have to deal with my grouping symbols right now. Okay. Do we have any exponents? Nope. Skip the E. Do we have any multiplication or division? Yeah, I've got two things of multiplication. We're going to do those from left to right. So 2 times negative 3 would give me what? Say it again. What would you say? You said something. What were you saying? Negative six. There we go. Thank you. Negative 6. Then I've got 3 times 4. What's 3 times 4? 12. 12. Now I'm down to negative 6 plus 12. Do I have any more multiplication or division? Nope. Do we have any addition or subtraction? Yeah. What's negative 6 plus 12? 6. six. There's my value when x equals negative 3 and y equals 4. Questions on that? How are we feeling about this so far after three examples? Pretty easy, that's good. Everyone feeling pretty confident about it? All right. Letter B. Same step we've been doing on all of them. Replace your variables with the number that they equal. So what am I replacing my x's with? Negative 3. Which x? Just the top one? Yeah, both of them. What am I replacing the y with? So that's what my expression looks like after I substitute. Negative 3 plus 4 divided by negative 3 squared. All right. I'm trying to think. Hold on. This one's a little different. First off, do we have any grouping symbols? That have operations going on inside of them. Yes. Do the division first? Is that what you're saying? Okay. I got you. Do we have any grouping symbols with operations in them? No. Do we have any exponents? Yeah. yeah. Negative 3 to the second power, right? What does an exponent tell me to do? Yeah. It tells you the big number is your base, right? Two is your exponent. So in our case, it tells us to have two of our base, so two negative threes being multiplied together. So what's negative three times negative three? Negative three times negative three. It's nine, yes. Very good. So, there's our exponent simplified. Negative 3 times negative 3 gave me positive 9. Correct? Here's where it gets maybe a little confusing. This problem's a little different. What would I do next? Why do you say that? Because multiplication and division come next, right? In our order of operations, technically. Right? They do come next, right? It's not a trick question. Multiplication and division do come next in the order of operations. You are correct, though. I do need to simplify my numerator of my fraction first. Okay? I need to get it down to one number before I can divide. 
So I guess technically what we could have done is called this grouping symbols up top and done that at the very beginning. But it's okay if we do it now. It's not going to affect anything in our problem. What's negative 3 plus 4? 1. Does so everyone see why we needed to add or subtract before we needed to divide in this case? I can't divide two numbers being added together by one number until I've added those two numbers. Okay? Now, I can do my division, but 1 divided by 9 is just going to give me a decimal. So, I'm going to leave it like this. Can I simplify 1 over 9? Can it be reduced down at all? Nope. So there's my solution. Questions on B? All right. Can I move on to our last slide of examples? First example had one variable. This example had two variables. How many variables do you think we're going to have now? Three. Three. And one of them equals a fraction. Golly, fractions are fun, aren't they? You guys like fractions? Fractions are great. They're just numbers. Evaluate each expression. For A equals two-thirds, B equals nine, and C equals negative four. Are my processes going to change at all? No, I'm just plugging in the numbers for each of my variables and then using my order of operations to simplify and to evaluate my expressions. So letter A, what am I replacing A with? Um, two thirds. Two -thirds. Is everyone okay on letter A if I make these parentheses brackets? Yeah. Brackets are gonna mean the same thing as parentheses, but I'm gonna be using parentheses to plug in my variables. So is everyone okay if I use brackets? Okay. So we said replacing A with two thirds, B with what? Nine, C with negative four. Any confusion on how I plugged in? Like I said, I changed my original parentheses to brackets because I used parentheses to plug in my variables. It does not change anything, it still means the same thing. All right, got to use those order of operations now. Do I have any grouping symbols with operations going on inside of them? Uh, yeah. yeah, my brackets have a bunch of operations going on inside of them, correct? I've got multiplication, I've got exponents, I've got subtraction, I've got addition, I've got a lot of it, right? So I need to simplify everything inside my brackets first and foremost. So within my brackets, I'm going to start the order of operations over again. Does that make sense? So in my brackets, do I have any grouping symbols with operations going on inside of them? What? Oh, I heard someone say something. In the brackets, do I have any grouping symbols with operations going on inside of them? I know I got parentheses here. Is there, well, I guess there's division in there, right? But that's just a fraction. It's not going to simplify at all. So there's no operations going on inside here. Are there any operations going on inside this set of parentheses? Does everyone know what I mean when I say operations? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Are there any operations going on inside here? Nope. What about inside here? No. So I don't have to worry about the grouping symbols in the brackets. Do we have any exponents in the brackets? Yeah, I've got two-thirds to the second power. So that's the next thing that I need to evaluate. How many two-thirds am I multiplying here? Two. That's what my exponent of two tells me, right? It tells me to do two-thirds times two-thirds. Everyone agree with that? How do I multiply two fractions? Does anyone remember? 
And don't tell me the butterfly method. Probably start. It's probably time to start paying attention to fractions. You're going to see them more and more. You don't remember how to multiply fractions. Say it. Straight across. Straight across. That's right. So I'm multiplying the numerators together. Then I'm multiplying the denominators together. So up top, what's 2 times 2? Four. 4. And down the bottom, 3 times 3? 9. Do I have any other exponents? Everything else I just brought down because I didn't have any other exponents. Any confusion on that? Am I moving too fast for anybody? Do I need to slow down or am I going at a good pace here? Good pace. Okay. Okay, I took care of the exponents in the brackets. Do I have any multiplication or division in the brackets? Yeah, so I'm going to do all my multiplication and division from left to right inside the brackets. Here's a fun one. Nine times four ninths. You don't want to take a guess at it? Well, think about how we multiply two-thirds times two-thirds. What would nine as a fraction be? 9 over 1, so 9 times 4, 36, 1 times 9, 9, 36 divided by 9. Question? 36 divided by 9, 4. So 9 times 4 ninths is... Next set of multiplication, I've got negative 2 times 9. What does that give me? Well, a negative times a positive is going to give me a negative, thank you. 2 times 9 is going to give me 18. So negative 18. And then last set of multiplication, 3 times negative 4 would give me what? What? There we go, negative 12. Y'all need to speak up. I'm a little hard of hearing. Y'all are talking too soft for me. Do I have any more multiplication division in the brackets? No. Now I can move on to addition and subtraction, which is all I have left. Uh, I'm just going to do it all at once. What's 4 minus 18? Close. Negative 14. And then negative 14 minus 12 would give me... Negative 14 minus 12. Not 2. Not negative 2. What? No. Negative 26. Here we go, negative 26. Remember, if they have the same sign, you're adding them and keeping the sign that they both have. So 14 plus 12 is 26. They're both negative, so it's a negative 26. Have I simplified everything inside my brackets? Yeah, it's all simplified down to one number, right? Now that I simplified everything in the brackets, now I can jump outside the brackets and start my order of operations over again. Do we have any grouping symbols with operations going on inside? Nope. Do we have exponents? Nope. Do we have multiplication or division? Yep, 2 times negative 26. Negative 
Negative 52. Good job, y'all. Good job. And I'm down to one number. I don't have any other operations. So there's the value of my expression when A is 2 thirds, B is 9, and C is negative 4. Any questions on that? Last example. Can I erase and move on? Once again, plug in. Replacing B with 9. Replacing A with 2 thirds. <clears throat> replacing C with negative 4. What do I need to do first on this problem? Are you drawing it in the air? Square root? Yeah, square root. We're going to simplify the square root of 9. So I'm asking myself, what number times itself gives me 9? 3. three. Square root of 9 is 3. I consider that a grouping symbol. I simplified it all the way down to its number. Do we have any other grouping symbols with operations going on inside? Yes or no? We don't, do we? Do we have any multiplication or division? Yes. Negative 3 times 2 thirds. Give me negative 2. You can use that same method we used on the previous example. 3 over 1 times 2 over 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 1 times 3 is 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. I had a negative times a positive, so I know it's negative 2. And the last set of multiplication, 2 times negative 4. What? Negative 8. And now I just have addition or subtraction. What's 3 minus 2? 1, 1 minus 8. Negative 7. Any questions on B? Are there any questions over any of the problems we just covered? Same process every time. Replace your variables with the numbers that they equal. Use your order of operations to work it out. Down to one number. Okay? We good? All right. Here's your first assignment. All right. Page 7, numbers 1 through 23 all. Go ahead and write that down. That's all the notes I got for you. Page 7, numbers 1 through 23, all. So today is Monday. So this will be due Wednesday the 16th. Okay? Like I said, I have all my stuff due on Canvas. If you need help, Getting that uploaded to Canvas, I can show you. Um, but do we have any questions about any of the notes before I end my recording? 